Okay, hello everyone, welcome to this week's video and today we're going to be talking about how do Formula 1 drivers train, how they keep fit, what exercises they do, what needs to be trained, what's important and what's not important. Uh, so with it being the off season, drivers are getting ready for 2022, that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm Ollie Patas, like and subscribe for more F1 content. Boom, let's talk F1. So I thought this would be quite an interesting video to do, what with it being the off season, you know, drivers are training at the highest intensity they do all year, they're getting ready for new season, getting into peak physical condition. Um, so I thought we'd start with why F1 drivers need to keep fit. I think more so in years gone by, but also now to an extent, F1 drivers weren't really seen as elite level athletes. There wasn't a great deal of physical exertion associated with the sport, but now obviously the sport is coming more into the spotlight, you know, it's growing like I've said and kept saying over the last few months, uh, people starting to realise how much uh, training is needed to become a great F1 driver uh, and be a great F1 driver. Uh, it is, you know, these guys are elite level athletes and there are fundamental reasons why they need to train. It is more important than you think, I'd imagine. So to start with, F1 drivers need to meet a certain weight. They cannot exceed more than 80 kilograms uh, as themselves. Um, that was brought in in 2019, it used to be less before that. If a driver doesn't meet 80 kilograms, they have ballast added to the car, so they have extra weight put in to meet the 80 kilograms. Um, it, it does mean that drivers need to be within 4 to 6% body fat, and that is incredibly low. It needs to be around 4 to 6% body fat because, well, they need to keep their weight down. They need to be in the best condition possible, and that is a very low body fat percentage. But of course, one of the main reasons they need to stay fit is because of something called G force, which most of us know what that is. But if you don't, that is the force that they exert mainly through high speed corners. So. If you look at, I think it was Mugello 2020, Lewis Hamilton during the middle sector was pulling up to 6 Gs, which is 6 times your body weight. So imagine you are going around a corner in your car, just a random corner, like a roundabout for example, and someone decides to put 6 times your body weight, forcing you that way, and you're trying to go that way. Uh, which is why they need to have very strong neck, core, etc. We'll get into that, what they need to train specifically. but. Imagine six times your body weight forcing you that way and you're trying to go that way and you have to maintain a, uh, a level playing field and maintain looking forward and not fall over to the side. Let's say you weigh 80 kilograms, that's 480 kilograms pushing you that way. That's almost half a ton. So they have to maintain that uh, and withstand that during high speed corners. That's not all the time but it's for the majority of the lap. Braking alone, pressing down the brake pedal is 2 G's of force. Uh, not to mention the brake pedal weighs 160 kilograms so you're pushing a brake pedal in your car it probably weighs about 5-10 kilograms if that. Uh, this is 160 kilograms. During a race your heart rate is usually at 170 beats per minute so that's uh, references to how important cardio is and we'll get onto that as well in the video. But I'm not going to spend too long on why I need to train because I feel like that is more obvious than what we're going to talk about in the rest of the video. Uh, but so yeah, drivers need to have certain strength in certain areas and it is very, very important and can be detrimental to whether you're successful or not. And at certain races drivers can lose up to 4 kilograms of their own body weight. So there we have it, it's a very physically demanding sport. Now, let's move on to the next uh, next question, which is how do Formula 1 drivers keep fit? Well, every driver is different, but most drivers base their training around gym work and cardio. Most also have a personal trainer to take them to that next level. Uh, and how, so certain exercises can be boring, so I like to add different variations, you know. As long as you're doing the right things, it's kind of personal preference as to what exercises you actually do. Now, a lot of the exercises they do have to target certain quite niche uh, muscle groups uh, like the neck which is why they have to end up doing quite bespoke and peculiar exercises in order to target those muscle groups. Now it is strength training, it's not uh, muscle growth training, you know, it's not like a bodybuilder training regime where you'd have you know, a training split and the aim is muscle growth, no. Here the aim is to strengthen the muscles that you're training and not put on too much weight. Obviously they've got to stay below the 80 kilogram, uh, 80 kilogram weight threshold uh, and also maintain a very low body fat percentage like I mentioned. Right, so what needs to be trained and how is that then trained? Well, we'll start with one of the most important ones, especially regarding the old, uh, the old G-force, is the neck. The neck is of paramount importance in F1 driver in order to stay upright when you've got, you know, half a ton pressing on you through a high speed corner. Uh, so a neck is one of the most important uh, and how do they train this? Well, a lot of personal trainers and drivers like to mimic, like to go for weighted helmets or resistant, resistance bands to mimic the force they experience in the car. Now they are some quite peculiar looking exercises I must say, but uh, the importance of them cannot be underestimated. 
As a result of training the neck at such high frequency and intensity, F1 driver necks are f***ing huge. Uh, and they can shift up to 40 kilograms of weight. You know, if you look at an F1 driver, look at their neck, you wouldn't see it unless someone points it out, but their necks are, well, on the, uh, on the larger side. Okay, so next up we've got arms slash upper body. Now drivers cannot afford to be scrawny, they've got to have quite good functional fitness, which is where pull-ups, press-ups, bench press all come in as important exercises in order to give the neck a good grounding for it to sit on. Um, you also need to have strong arms for the steering wheel, because although there's power steering, um, it helps operate the steering wheel during high speed corners with the G-force uh, and operating the dials in high pressure scenarios. Just having strong arms makes the whole process a lot easier. So yeah, with regards to arms and body, functional fitness is very important as opposed to the muscle growth like we've mentioned. Uh, it just makes the whole process of driving the car a lot easier and it gives the neck a good platform with which to sit on. So a lot of F1 driver training is to do with stability, you know, because you've got to obviously keep an upright position, a consistent position during all these forces uh, and different loads you're experiencing. Uh, and this is where legs comes in. You know, you've got to have very strong glute glutes for stability. This is very important. Again, you want to avoid muscle growth, but just get the strength and stability there. You know, hamstrings and quads, uh, you need them for the brake pedal. Uh, and the calves cannot be overlooked either. So you've got like tiptoe raises, stuff like that. Uh, box jumps as well, so again, some quite functional exercises. Uh, and again, yeah, like I said, muscle growth is not the aim, uh, they've just got to be strong uh, and stable. Core as well, very, very important, helps maintain that upright position in the car, don't get lopsided and lazy. The core is important. A popular core exercise for F1 drivers is the Russian twist, because you know, that kind of mimics the, uh, the cockpit position, and they kind of do this with like a weighted steering wheel kind of thing. Uh, I do that in the gym as well sometimes. I uh, quite like that exercise. So the Russian twist with like a weighting steering wheel, that's the best core exercise for them to do. As well as standard core exercises, you know, like planks, sit-ups, you know, etc, etc. The list goes on. Uh, but yeah, as for core, that's what it is. And finally, you might have been thinking this before as well, reactions need to be trained, you know. It's like everything in life. The more you train it, the better you get it. Practice is a master or no. Repetition is the master of all skill, so the more they practice their reactions, the better they get. Now, good exercises for this are like tennis ball games, boxing, stuff like that. So like, the good one is when you drop tennis balls, the personal trainer will drop tennis balls, and then the driver has to catch them as quickly as possible. Uh, you usually see them doing that before a race while they get in the cockpit, just to kind of coordinate themselves and get them in the best possible headspace uh, and mental state, and also have the best reactions possible. Now reaction training is a lot more popular during the season because uh, you know during the season drivers you know they're at their peak condition they just try and maintain what they've got maintain muscle mass so emphasis on building the muscle like off season uh, isn't necessarily the main focus during the season which is why reactions coordination reflexes is mainly trained during the season and the final element of driver training is cardio. Now cardio varies widely between a lot of drivers. Jensen Button, who retired in 2016, Jensen Button's favourite method of cardio was triathlons. Roman Grosjean, who retired in 2020 from F1, his favourite form of cardio was cross-country skiing. Point being, it can literally be anything as long as it gets the job done. So cycling, rowing, running, anything a driver wants, it's all down to personal preference, as long as they do it, as long as they do it to you know, level required that the personal trainer requires, you know, as long as they do it, that's all that matters. Whichever method is more fun for you. Now what would I do? I'd probably go for, I, I, I like running, so I'd probably do running or cross country skiing, you know, you're in a nice environment, you've got mountains, the snow, you know. What, what would you do? Comment below what kind of cardiovascular work is your favourite. Now 170 beats per minute in the cockpit for just short of two hours, that's pretty intense. That shows how much cardiovascular work needs to be put in. You know, 170 beats per minute is more than the average person gets after they go for a 5k run. Uh, so cardiovascular work is so, so important. Especially as they're losing up to 4 kilograms of their own body weight per race. So they've also got to be very hydrated too. And sleep also is very important. Almost forgot to mention that. Uh, sleep is so important because obviously you're going, traveling around the world all year round. Jet lag is a huge factor, so Nico Rosberg in 2017 hired a sleep specialist to help with his sleep in order to get the you know, eight, nine plus hours of, uh, of rest because you know when you sleep it has, well, I believe sleep is very important in life anyway uh, and for an elite level athlete it's even more important. So getting the right amount of sleep can mean the difference between success and failure sometimes. But yeah, there we go, that's how Formula 1 drivers train, you know. It's incredibly important if you didn't already know how important it was, now you do. You know, the neck, the core, the legs, the reactions, the arms, the upper body, everything needs to be trained to 
a very high standard. Muscle mass is not the aim. Muscle strength is the aim. Uh, and you know, you've got to stay fit very cardiovascularly as well. So all the drivers uh, up and down the grid will be training at very high intensity and very high frequency at the moment as they get ready for 2022. Off season can be brutal, especially with rule changes coming in. Training regimes and techniques may have to be altered slightly because the cars of the 2017 to 2021 era were the most physical cars there's ever been and that's set to stay the same for 2022 despite the regulation changes. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you learned something. Uh, and yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Boom, let's talk F1.